Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and today I'm beginning a journey into the dark with Dreadout. This is a third person horror game that was designed by a small Indonesian indie dev to be a sort of love letter to the Fatal Frame games. Now, while Fatal Frame is about fighting Japanese mythology inspired spirits with a magical camera obscura, Dreadout is about fighting spirits from Indonesian mythology with a camera phone. Now, unlike Fatal Frame, Dreadout, of course, being made by a small dev, has a lot less of a budget behind it, and it definitely shows, and there's a bit of a lack of polish and a bit of jankiness. But uh, I think this game definitely res deserves to be seen, at least, even if it's certainly not one of the top horror games, and uh, I feel like a lot of people probably glossed over it. Then again, Fatal Frame was a bit, uh, a bit of a niche game, even back when survival horror was still kind of popular. This game was originally released in an episodic format, but it's only two episodes. Uh, there was the original release, which is, you know, kind of a self-contained episode with a proper ending that leads into the second chapter. And then the second one came out quite a bit after, I believe it came out in 2015 late 2015, or maybe around summer, I think. Regardless, this is now complete. It also has a prologue chapter, a chapter zero, which was actually the Steam Greenlight demo for this game when it first was announced. And interestingly enough, despite the fact that that demo is actually a separate thing that happens before the beginning of the game, you couldn't actually play that when the main game came out but they eventually added it back in. And that's where we're gonna start today. Act zero. Start a new slot here. Here we are, we've woken up in this spooky, decrepit shack. And this is Linda, a student. And yes, that is a very tight skirt for a standard issue school skirt. This is her school uniform. So here we are in this creepy shack. Uh, we don't have anything right now except our school bag. But there's a phone over here ringing. Let's see who was phone. Thank God, Linda! What took you so long to pick up? Where are you? Are you alright? We're all dying waiting for you to get here. Thank God, Linda! What, what took you to pick up? Where, where are you, alright? We're all dying waiting for you. We're all dying. We're all So, this is the Iris phone, totally not an iPhone because it has a long battery life. And this will be our main tool throughout the game. Uh, it's got a very powerful flashlight, which again, somehow doesn't drain the battery. There's never a point where we have to worry about the battery. And uh, we can take pictures with it. There's some other things we can do with it as well, but mm, nothing we can do with it in here. So this is pretty much as fast as we can go. <laughs> this is our run. Obviously this game is not 
very pretty even for when it came out, but it was made on a small budget, and it does kind of almost approach the PS2 level that most of the Fatal Frame games came out on, though I'd still say that, you know, Fatal Frame 2 and 3 look better than this. This is a Unity Engine game, if you're wondering, which is, you know, kind of the reason it doesn't look super great. Well, there's our friend Ira, or Ira. <laughs> Unfortunately, our darkness-induced migraine allowed her to escape. There's that spooky ghost again. When there is a aggressive apparition around, you'll see this red sort of ring around the screen. There's also a white one that tells you there's something important nearby to investigate. And a blue one that tells you there is a non-hostile spirit nearby. So she's just over there being creepy. There's not much we can do right now. We'll just follow Ira for now. appear to be getting closer. I guess now's the time to, now's as good a time as any to start combat. So combat in this game is very simple even compared to Fatal Frame. Essentially when a ghost gets within range we can take a picture. Some ghosts will not be vulnerable immediately and we'll have to wait for them to open up their vulnerability. But usually, every time you take a picture, it will either stun them or force them to disappear. You can see that the hostile ring has disappeared, so we're in the safe zone for now. Hello, Pixel Lady. I won't even pretend I have any idea what any of the graffiti and you know newspaper clippings and stuff we'll see on the walls mean, because it's all in Indonesian. We have two ways to go. We didn't really see which way Ira went, but it looked like she went this way. Hmm. But well, there's nothing over here. Except these dudes. So get used to this, like, cloying level of darkness with no sky, because a lot of the game is this dark. Which is a good thing we have such a powerful flashlight. I feel like this might be a contender for most powerful video game flashlight. Alright, so we got a white, which means there is something around here to see. Or find. Those can be a little confusing sometimes, though, because they will show up through walls if you're close enough to whatever the thing is. So there are some things that we can only see with the camera, including hidden paths, certain spirits, and other things that we might need to progress. It's worth keeping in mind that if you can't figure out where to go, you should whip out your camera, especially if there's an aura nearby. I wonder if anyone watching this will be able to translate. I'm assuming that's some sort of danger, don't go in here. So we're going to go in here. Oh, ghost cockroaches. The worst kind. Be 
banished bug spirit. So again, this was this was all the demo when this was first announced and put onto Steam Greenlight. It was one of the earlier Greenlight games, if I remember correctly. Hmm, that's a little ominous. A little Blair Witch going on here. I guess we'll have to go talk to our creepy friend. Also, that's some weirdly luminescent graffiti. We've got like a creepy ghost lady on the wall. And a bunch of stuff I can't read. Also, this picture of three dolls or something? She's gone. Tyra, where are you? You're not Ira. You're just a cat bear thing hanging from the ceiling. Oh, there you are. Smile. Follow me, Linda. <laughs> uh, okay. Also, I can't... Oh, there we go. I was stuck in place. She's really got some zip soups going on here. Hmm. None of these doors are functional. Oh, there you are. We got spooked at. So, you can't really die in this game. When you do die, you end up here in limbo. And the more times you die, the longer you have to run back to this light, the further away it gets. So we're going to get dumped back in here. That was pretty much just a scripted intro to Limbo, if I remember correctly. Since you couldn't get away from that ghost, and you cannot rapid-fire pictures, as ghosts have a bit of invulnerability after you damage them. So you can't just like rapid-fire a bunch of shots to take them down quick. What is that? Well, I think it's just the garbage bag clipping. I uh, can still hear that ghost. Hi, cat. Excuse me, cat. <laughs> oh, 
No, did the ghost send you to limbo too? <laughs> I can't leave this place. You're the only one who can get out of this place. <laughs> you have to get out of here. Take this key and leave. Now. <laughs> Alright. She sounds a bit conflicted about whether she wants us to stay or to go. But uh, I guess we'll take her advice and unlock this door. Hold on a sec. Having a good laugh, are we? Might as well finish her off before we continue. I still hear some labored breathing. Unfortunately, it's coming from where we can't actually go. So now that we've dealt with that ghost, let's go see what's through the door. We also have a ghostopedia, which had we actually finished that ghost off, she would now appear in here and it would tell us exactly what mythological Indonesian spirit we were dealing with. Or what kind, I suppose, since a lot of them are not a unique spirit, but a type of spirit. You, uh... You ready to come with us, or...? No, I'm just gonna hang out here. Well, I guess since we're the only one that can leave, we might as well. Oh. Maybe we should stay inside. There's, uh... Certainly something over there. But, we're actually gonna leave that for next time. So until then, I've been Shadefire, and I hope you'll come scope out some ghosts with me again next time. Until then, you folks all take care and keep jiggling. <laughs>